Now from CBS 4 News, this is Facing South Florida with Jim DeFeedy. Good morning, I'm Jim DeFeedy and welcome to Facing South Florida. There is a lot going on in the news and one of the things I like about the format of this show is that it gives us a chance to have a deeper and hopefully more thoughtful discussion on those issues. This morning we are going to look at the calls to do something about guns in the wake of the mass shootings in Texas and Ohio. We're also going to discuss the efforts by the Trump administration to rewrite our immigration laws in a way that would fundamentally change who we are as a nation. And we'll talk about the 2020 presidential race. My guest this morning is Democratic Congressman Ted Deutsch, a member of the House Judiciary Committee. Judiciary sits at the crossroads of many of the big issues that will be decided in the coming weeks and months. And I appreciate him coming in, Congressman. Always a pleasure. It's always my pleasure, Jim. Thanks. So let's uh, start with uh, with guns. Uh, 18 months since Parkland schools just reopened this mm -hmm. week. Kids are going back to school. They'll have the drills and all the rest of it. But yet we've seen these two shootings uh, that occurred in the past couple of weeks in Ohio and in Texas. Mm -hmm. A lot of talk again about uh, doing something about guns. Will something be done about guns? Uh, yes, something will be done. And, and there has been a lot that's been done already. Uh, understand, after Parkland, this movement of young people sprouted up that, that led, among other things, to delivering a gun safety majority in the U.S. House. And it's that gun safety majority that passed universal background checks, the most significant uh, gun safety legislation to pass in years, uh, the fact is, it's not a law now because Mitch McConnell refuses to bring it up. Uh, we should increase the pressure on him to do the right thing, but that's not enough. We're going to go back. I serve on the Judiciary Committee. We're going to go back to Washington before Congress reconvenes in September, and we're going to take up other pieces of gun safety legislation. We should move forward on red flag laws, something that has bipartisan support, that has helped save lives across the country. We should make that a national policy. We're going to move forward on... Uh, on banning high-capacity magazines, legislation that I've introduced, no one needs to fire off more than 10 rounds at a time. The shooter in Dayton had a drum with 100 rounds. Those should be illegal. Uh, I think we ought to treat assault weapons the same way we treat machine guns, regulate them under the National Firearms Act and don't have any more. Uh, those are things we ought to do. One last thing, though. There is so much. You mentioned the first day of school. I, uh, I was out uh, in Broward welcoming students when they came back to school. And, and in too many places in Broward and around the country, the first day of school started and parents worried about their kids' safety because of these shootings. We can move forward on the Eagles Act legislation that Mario diaz Balart and I introduced, uh, on other legislation that we've introduced that, that can help move and broaden the threat assessments that already exist in Washington to focus on schools, to send people out in the communities to help identify threats, and uh, to give schools the ability to provide, to uh, assess themselves grants that can help them address vulnerabilities. All of those are, uh, those last two are bipartisan. We need to do the things we can do right now, and we need to push for the real change that will save lives going forward. All right, so let's, so now, it's let's. That's a lot. That's a lot, a lot, but let's, so let's, do. so let's yeah. go down and break it down. Sure. So, so as you mentioned, I think the, I think the House passed the, um, the background checks bill in February, I think it was. Yes, it's, it's been over months. 160 days now. Right. Yeah. Um, it's, you sent it to the Senate, where Mitch McConnell has said it's basically a non-starter. He will not take up the bill. In Instead, what appears that the Senate is trying to do, what the White House is trying to do, is to revive the Manchin-Toomey bill, which had come close to passing in 2013, but fell a few votes short. Is Manchin-Toomey, and let's try to define what that does, it gives some background checks, right. not as universal as right. the House measure. Is that a starting point? Is that, a, is that acceptable if we get just that? element passed? Yeah, the question, the question is, when the president says, as he did this weekend, as he did after Parkland in the White House, as I sat a couple seats away from him, he said, we need to pass background checks. Is he operating with good faith? And the last time, the answer, the conclusion clearly was no. And what makes you and think anything is going right, to be different this I, time? I don't know that it will, but the reports that the, that the White House has been talking to members of the Senate uh, to revive that effort, I think are important. And I'm not, 
look, if there's a chance to do anything, I'm not going to rule it out based on what's happened before or all of the other times that the president guess, has said I, one thing and then wound up doing something I guess something what else. I'm asking is, is incremental change acceptable? Will, will it be acceptable to you, to other House Democrats? Or is it if we don't get significant changes, we're not going to take an incremental advance? No, that, no, that's the wrong approach. No, it's not all or nothing. Anything that we can do that can help save lives, we ought to do. Make, taking the National Threat Assessment Center and expanding their mandate to include school safety doesn't sound like a big deal, except that more people will be trained to identify threats and it can stop school shootings. That's not banning assault rifles, but it will help and we ought to do it. We ought to pass red flag laws that are bipartisan. So let me ask you so, about red yes, flag laws. Incremental steps are important steps, but we're going to keep fighting for all of it. So I want to ask you about red flag laws, because yeah. as I understand some of the negotiations right now is that the push would be to have red flag laws not necessarily a national red flag law, but creating some sort of encouragement for states to pass red flag laws. Right. Would that be a good step? Uh, yeah, absolutely. And there, <laughs> see, but then, but then don't you end up with a situation where you, you get patchwork uh, passage of laws, oh, no, and, no. They, and they get to sort of There's, put a fig leaf and say, we did something about guns, but nothing significantly got done on guns. Well, no, I don't care. I, I don't care. I, I'm not going to allow someone to claim that we should be satisfied with small steps. That doesn't mean we shouldn't take small steps, even as we push for the others. On the, the red flag, the, here's, there are different versions. There's one that that says if you have concerns about someone doing harm to himself or others then you go to the federal government you go to the u.s marshal or the u.s attorney uh, that's one approach we should do that and provide incentives for states to also pass their own laws because if someone feels threatened they're going to go to their local police that that necessarily is a, a state law that would uh, that would apply so we should include all of those it's one bill it's one piece of this but again the way i approach all of this jim is if we can by doing anything in washington we can save even one life from gun violence we ought to do it and i'm not going to allow anyone on the other side who who ruthlessly stands in the way of meaningful reform on whether it's universal background checks or banning high capacity magazines and claim that they're a great champion for saving lives but if on that's the other, all they've done. But on the other end, you're also going to have probably some of your colleagues who will refuse to vote for a partial measure saying that it's not enough that we need to go further. There'll probably be some of the presidential candidates and the Senate side who will, who will not accept a partial step as you're talking about about, and there will probably be a lot of your colleagues in the House. Yeah. Uh, Jim, I, I spent yesterday, uh, part of yesterday, at the Stoneman Douglas Public Safety Commission meeting with uh, a good number of the Parkland families whose loved ones were taken from this earth on February 14th, 2018. I can't, I cannot look at them and tell them that we had an opportunity to do something that can help save lives and prevent even one family from having to deal with the grief and pain uh, and having a part of them ripped from them the way that they have. I can't tell them that we had that chance and, and passed on it because we couldn't do more. We have to do everything we can. Last question on this and then I want to move on. Yeah. Is, is uh, banning assault weapons is that unrealistic in this current environment in terms of the NRA and, and the makeup of the United States Senate? Um, well, the NRA, I mean, let's, let's acknowledge what's happened to the NRA. They're falling apart. Look at the corruption starting at the, at the very top. Look at the, uh, at the challenges and the layoffs and the, the issues with the Russians and the tax issues. Should they lose their 501c3 so status? We should absolutely be looking at that. Absolutely, because of uh, everything that we've learned over the past year, year and a half. But that's the NRA. Uh, but does, do they still have power? Some in the Senate. Should we fight against Mitch McConnell's efforts to hold this back? Yes, but the House needs to do what we can. And I don't think, after what just happened in El Paso and in Dayton, the idea that we would go back to Washington and not even talk about assault weapons, um, that's not acceptable. I so, wanna... I, again, I just want to be clear. We need to take every step we can to get laws in place that can save lives. 
but there's no one who's fighting harder to get the, these, these weapons of war off of our streets uh, as much as I am, and more importantly, as much as the people of Florida are, uh, as they work to, to put an assault weapons ban on the ballot. Ban Assault Weapons Now is a group that's doing incredible work every day to get that ballot initiative out there so that we can take action, even if Mitch McConnell refuses That's at the state to. level, here, the in, state level. here in Florida. Yep. Let me just so, sort of talk about the rise of white nationalism and, and the notion of domestic terrorism not being significantly um, investigated, that the resources are, aren't really there. Again, this is an issue for the Judiciary Committee. Yeah. You know, there's been a lot of effort spent on protecting the homeland from, from foreign terrorism. What about domestic terrorism? Are we doing enough there? No. No, of course we're not. And that starts with the way the administration approaches it. Uh, we had a hearing recently where the administration official couldn't even bring himself to acknowledge that white nationalist terrorism is a threat. And it's not just a threat here. It's, it's a growing threat worldwide. But we have, to, we have to call it what it is. We have to acknowledge that, that in Charleston and in Pittsburgh and in El Paso, just as three examples, that in each one of those instances, those shooters, uh, just like the, the guy in Christchurch, they, they had a very specific aim. And it was not to go and randomly shoot people. It was to go kill African Americans, Jews, uh, Latinos. That's what we have to acknowledge. We, are, we have been right to treat uh, international terrorism as a threat. Certainly after 9-11, when we felt it here on our homeland, uh, we had the responsibility to do that, and we must continue to. But when you see this growing threat of white nationalist terrorism, we have to call it what it is, and we have to treat it with the same, uh, the same passion to keep Americans safe as we do other terrorism. Do you, to what extent do you attribute the actions of the, the shooter in Texas to the type of rhetoric that was coming out of the the uh, the president. Well, look, the when when you uh, when you set a, a standard, when you tolerate the the language that has become um, too prevalent in this country, coming from um, starting starting at the White House and start starting with the way the president talks about immigrants, for example, uh, there's a tone that's set that encourages um, others to speak the same way. And some people, some people then internalize that and, and in their own situation with their own warped minds uh, wind up carrying that out to extremes and conducting violent acts. Uh, we, the reason that it's so important to focus on white nationalist terrorism is so that we can, uh, we can change the conversation so that no one anywhere in this country thinks that it's acceptable not just to engage in terrorism obviously that that's uh, that's something that we have to speak out against but that the kind of statements the white nationalist statements the the, the way that people talk about people of color the way that that the administration uh, demonizes immigrants and 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 people of color uh, that that's not tolerated either it's a battle but it's a really important battle we need to be waging right now. Is it is the right question to ask? Is it a good question to ask? Is the president a racist? Is that the right I question? I, I don't. I, I, I want to focus on what's coming out of the White House and the policies that contribute to an atmosphere that leads people to think that it's okay to demonize others. And that's what we should be combating when, and I think we may chat further about this, but when Ken Cuccinelli does the sorts of things that he's done this week, uh, that sets a tone and sends a message well, me, about how, how we should interact with immigrants, and, and it's terrible, and we have to confront it. You've written my tease for me. When we come back, I want to take a break here, and I want to talk about Ken Cuccinelli and exactly immigration when we get back on Facing South Florida.